Mike, could you lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. The New Jersey Open Public Meetings Law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice and to attend the meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interests is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of the Act, the Fourthly Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be published on January 13, 2022 and January 14, 2022 and posted on the district website at www.flboe.com. Published in the board's designated online media outlet, The Record and the Star Ledger, filed with the clerk of the borough of Fort Lee, and mailed to all persons, if any, who have requested said notice. Please be advised that this meeting is being taped and may be broadcasted on local TV and the district's website at a future date. The Open Public Meeting Act allows for remote participation at board meetings and defines the word meeting as any gathering, whether corporal or by means of communication equipment, which is attended by or open to all of the members of a public body, held with the intent on the part of the members of the body present to discuss or act as a unit upon the specific public business of that body. May we please have roll call. Ms. Cho. Ms. Curry? Yes. Ms. Uh, Kim? Yes. Ms. Morrell? Yes. Ms. Richter? Here. Ms. Ramba? Here. Mr. Rubina? Here. Ms. Dassey? Here. Ms. Bolak? Here. You have four. The, the board will be convening to executive session to discuss legal, personnel, and other confidential matters. The board will reconvene into public session at approximately 7.30 p.m. tonight. May I have a motion to go into executive session? Motion. Second. Motion with you know, second, Ramba, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? I will turn it over. Public Meetings Law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice and to attend meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interest is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of the Act, the Fourthly Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be published on January 13, 2022 and January 14, 2022 and posted on the district's website at www.flboe.com published in the board's designated online media newspaper, newspapers, The Record and The Star Ledger, filed with the clerk of the borough of Fort Lee, and mailed to all persons of any who have requested said notice. Please be advised that this meeting is being taped and may be broadcasted on local TV and the district's website at a future date. The Open Public Meeting Act allows for remote participation at board meetings and defines the word meeting as any gathering, whether corporal or by means of communication equipment, which is attended by or open to all of the members of a public body held with the intent on the part of the members of the body present to discuss or act as a unit upon the specific public business of that body. May we please have roll call. Ms. Cho. Here. Ms. Curry. Here. Ms. Kim. Here. Ms. Morrell. Here. Ms. Richter. Here. Ms. Ramba. Here. Mr. Rubino. Here. Ms. Stasu. Here. Ms. Colbach. Here. You have quorum. The board convened executive session at 6.30 p.m. tonight to discuss legal, personnel, and other confidential matters. Mr. Kravitz, will you begin by sharing your superintendent's report? Yes, Ms. Colbert, thank you very much. This evening, I'm, I'm very excited to share our uh, PowerPoint presentation with everyone as far as where we're looking to, what we're looking to do uh, for our future. This is just a sampling of what we have planned, but I really wanted to get this stuff out there and, and share the excitement that I have and some of the administrators and I have been working on. So you'll see from the first slide, elementary education. Next slide, if you could click. So, you know, when we look at our, our schools, we want to make sure we include all facets. So we have our early, early elementary education, our middle school, and our high school, and then of course, beyond. 
And what's the main thing we want to do? Create opportunities for our children. So in early ed elementary education, next slide, we're looking to become what's called a model innovation city, um, creating our own app that's a geo app, geofenced app that allows students ages two years old, anyone who's playing with those uh, iPhones, iPads, anything with their own apps, we'd like to dictate what that is that matches our curriculum. Parents can download it, it gets updated as long as they are in the geofence of Fort Lee, working with the library, working with all of our municip you know, municipal friends and create opportunities for kids to start reading at a very young age. It helps with their phonics. Um, and this model innovation city idea, there are, there are about 30 of them around the country. It helps to focus kids on really early literacy. It also helps when we have our students come into kindergarten and pre-K because we'll actually identify what their sight word capabilities are, what their skill sets are, and it can help us get a jump start to where we want to be with our early elementary education. Grades five through eight. So one of the first things we're doing is talking about our math tracks. We want to be compliant, making sure that every student has the opportunities presented to them, whether it's foreign language, whether it's music, um, STEM. We want to increase our music program growth. We want to create that music program that starts in the younger grades so that we can build throughout our, our high school. And we need to look at our math sequence. We'll talk about that in a minute. But first thing we want to do is create a STEM program that's a university collaboration. We're looking at several universities to create a STEM program for grades five through eight. This would be a four week program where we do writing and summer reading. So every student would have to do that novel, but in a college setting. We want to teach them Cornell note taking, offer them science to science labs at a college level, increase our infusion of technology into this program, and create groups so that students learn to work in groups and collaborate on new ideas. Next slide. So what I said before about the math tracks, if you remember two pre presentations ago, when Ms. Karuba and Ms. Kim did a presentation, one of the things we noticed is our algebra scores were quite low. In fact, in the recent Start Strong data, it showed that only 49% of the students needed strong support. High school, 79% needed strong support. We are one of the few schools that have all of the students in eighth grade, I would say about 95% of them, taking algebra one. While those are lofty goals, sometimes it doesn't uh, prepare our students for success. If they're not ready to learn that yet, maybe we should go back. Maybe we should offer a sequence. Sixth grade math, seventh grade math, eighth grade pre-algebra. Now, there are tracks for accelerated students, just like other school districts in our area have, that can accelerate those students to have algebra by eighth grade, or even geometry by eighth grade. And we'll maintain that. But let's set our goals that are achievable for all of our students. The idea that every student should be able to do that is we can see in the data, not working well. So let's try to change that and offer success. Excellent. Fort Lee High School, we are looking for university partnerships. Increase our AP offerings, vocational trades, and SAT tutoring, which we've already started. So if you're a high school student or a parent listening, please contact the guidance office. We have only a few stop staff uh, spots left. We have some really innovative SAT tutoring to help raise our scores. Some of the academies that we've been working with, local universities, Holy Name Hospital and St. Peter's University on a nursing academy. Students will graduate with college credits, experience in real lives at Holy Name Hospital, and they will progress towards their RN and their BSN. We're working with Fairleigh Dickinson, a shared high school with several other towns in the area that will do STEM, hospitality, which includes culinary, business, and they will graduate high school with an associate's degree from Fairleigh Dickinson University. Eastwood College, vocational trades, we will be offering general maintenance, electrical trades, and plumbing trades. When the students leave our high school, they will be one year away from their apprenticeship license. This is the one I'm very excited about. 
And actually in our audience tonight is Amy Ginsberg, Dr. Amy Ginsberg, who's Dean of the School of Education at William Patterson, and Dorothy Fiola, who's the Associate Dean of William Patterson. So this is really something that really, I think is just fantastic. If you've read the papers, if you're in education, you know there's a shortage of educators out there. This is our opportunity to create our own educators and our own pool of future leaders in our school district. So working with William Patterson, we are creating our pipeline. We are creating our new substitutes. We are creating them, we are giving our students the opportunity to leave Fort Lee High School with 30 to 36 credits. And we really have been kind of working on the idea of getting our seniors at William Patterson for their senior year. So they get to truly have that easy transition. So with all our academies though, what does it look like? So these are just a sampling of the credit courses. So students will still take in ninth grade their English, their math, their history, US one, their physical education, but a class like photography, that professor or that teacher here would be certified by William Patterson. And they would be taking a teaching course so they would get their intro to pedagogy. Really just stimulate the interest in teaching. Along the way, 10th grade, they would take their biology course, get credit for that. <coughs> they would get credit for psychology class, which these are courses that we currently offer, but it's now certifying our teachers to give college level credit at William Patterson. Financial planning, which every student has to take in the state of New Jersey, they would now get college credit for. And then the second level of teaching course. And by the way, this model looks similar in all those other academies. So junior year, chemistry, pre-cal, world history, and then again, another teaching course with the intent that 12th grade, our students, Fort Lee High School students would be on William Patterson's campus taking classes and finalizing their, their credit journey. And for me, again, when I look at this, that means their freshman year in college, they will have enough credit to come back and substitute for us. And that's what we're something we're really excited about. Next slide. So all this comes at, you know, how do we track all our students and get all our data? And I've been talking about this a lot. Lincoln is a program that has offered us a free trial for about eight months. It looks at all of the data that we have multi-year data, longitudinal data to see how students are doing, what their weaknesses and strengths are, can help develop an individual learning plan for every student in our district, and it syncs with our student information system. So it gives the ability for every teacher, every administrator, with the stroke of a key, to start to see how our students and track them. That's what success means, when we can start to see how you're doing. And we're not done. Our athletic director is working on creating an esports team. We've talked about creating a fencing team. We're looking at increasing our social emotional learnings offering. After school, what can we do better? We have a traditional after school program, but what can we do better? And I'm going to bring ideas to the board in the next several weeks about how we can look at our after school program to increase the learning that goes on and the fun. And of course, this is only day 110 for me, so I'm really excited about some of these programs that we have planned. <coughs> but I think the future is allowing kids opportunity. Now, some things people might get concerned with, of what if a ch child at the end of the four years doesn't want to become that teacher? It's okay. They have college credit. They have college credit that can transfer anywhere they go. But at least they have an opportunity to start to see what college is like. At least they have an opportunity with all of these partnerships that we've created to give them the ability to have a few of the stumbling blocks for kids to succeed taken away. Some of those stumbling blocks include finances, so we're going to help them with that by offering them uh, credit here. Second stumbling block is unsure of themselves. They're not used to a college atmosphere. Well, if we are mixing with college professors now, and giving them, in some cases, like at William Patterson or Fairleigh Dickens or St. Peter's, the opportunity to actually sit with professors, they might not be as fearful of going to those universities. And finally, it's the smooth transition. I'm comfortable. I'm ready to succeed. 
and that's our goal, giving them the opportunities. And it, that does not mean you don't want to go to these universities. We have a gamut of increases in our APs classes. We want to we want to offer everything here, and we are capable of doing it. We are excited. I know I'm very excited about bringing these programs in and, and how the potential for our school district will be in the next year or two. And that's where we want to go. Opportunities for all of our children. So that's my presentation. President? Thank you. Are there any questions regarding any of these programs? Yeah, just about the college thing. Would they be doing it online or would they physically go to the college? So we would have the professors here in the younger grades. Senior year, we would want them to go to college. How would they get transported back? They'd be on their own. No, we can work with them. So our goal is to have 25 students as a cohort in every one of those academy programs. Um, so in, in the one case of Fairleigh Dickinson, we're working with three other schools in the area. So we would share services, we would share professors, we would share busing. Uh, for William Patterson, we wanted to get them there. This is just a sampling of the academies we've started with. Now we've talked about offering music academies, we've talked about um, there's a Interest from our, actually our architectural firm to take we work with NJIT to create an architectural academy as well. So we're looking at that opportunity. So we're, we're, we're not stopping. I think the most important thing to understand is that a lot of children today want to want to move. They want to get going, and we're giving them those opportunities. Whether it's a vocational opportunity, a college opportunity, or if you want to take the IB classes, take the IB classes. We'll offer them. Advanced placement classes. We will offer them. Uh, we want to increase everybody's opportunity chances when they leave our high school. Yes? Just one question. Mark Brother, we have quite a lot of them. We were able to get um, very different to get it. So we have to pay for them. So we're going to have to pay for these guys? We're, we're looking to fund it from within, and there are grants out there that we can help, uh, that we can support that. I mean, it's still very generous. I mean, it's like $300 for a credit in the class. It's something similar to that. I think it's a little cheaper at some of the schools, yeah. uh, but there are some grants that, that I'm researching that will help offset those blocks. Yeah. And then at what point do the student make the decision to enroll in the academy? So the eighth grade they apply? So the eighth grade they will apply. We're going to do our presentations to families. Um, they would, we would present what the program looks like and they would apply to it. Does it mean that they have to stay to it? No. But we'd like them to get the opportunities within those grades to, to see where their future is. And how about the summer camp program? That will. We're looking to have as many of those fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders as we can. Um, and there are there's grant money available for that as well. And then also regarding modeling ABC. Yeah. So is that also funded That is. Uh, so some of that money comes from our general fund budget. It's a program, but some of it is offset by the Clinton Foundation um, that I've written before in other districts, and we use that there. Any other questions? Yep. My question whether the Thank you to your team. Uh, Diane Baker does a great job. With all the administrators who've been on the, on the phone calls with me, um, especially the high school, as they can, you know, Dr. Greenberg will tell you, we've had about four meetings here, four meetings where they're just asking questions, asking questions, what does it take? And I'm excited to just get this going, um, get those opportunities for all of our children. Yes. Um, I know that you guys, you said that you want to increase AP offering yes. in, at the high school. Um, are the, in the website, on Fort Lee Dixon website, are the AP classes that are listed on their platform and date? So, just so that I can check. Sure. So the course, app, course offering, uh, the catalog that went out, does not include any of these programs yet. They, we have a second course offering catalog ready to go after I did this presentation which will include also the other AP classes and everything else. So we just wanted to make sure everybody knew about it, specifically the board, uh, before we did that. Well, well, thank you both for coming and supporting his presentation. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Um, okay, thank you. That was, that was really well done. Thank you. Um, do we have any committee reports? Um, do board members have questions or comments um, on any of the items on tonight's agenda or any other topic? I had a question about the contact tracing. Uh, I've 
or kind of, I know that we are proving uh, nurses and taking them all the time, but it's for contact tracing. Um, I, I believe when COVID first hit, the contact tracing was done by town, I thought. So I like, when did that transition to the nurses? And does it make sense instead of overloading the nurses with contact tracing to get another person or so I'll answer the second part first. I, I smiled to my colleague, Ms. Diane Baker, because um, you know, we've been talking and the next presentation will be doing with your chart. And as we're looking at the future, we're looking at safety, security, and health, and who is going to be that new person who is responsible for all of it. Uh, so that part, I'll, I'll say we're looking at, at the kind of developing the job description, so someone is going to be the lead person for that. As far as the transition, I, I don't know that because I was not here for the transition, but I will tell you they are strong with contact tracing. If you test uh, at another location or any kind of student or teacher is, is determined that they are positive, the nurses do the contact tracing here. If someone from Ally, I know there was previously a phone call or questions about that, if someone tests at a hospital or any other location, um, the protocol is that the school, excuse me, that person will be called by your local health department, and then they would be the contact person. I don't know how that transition took place here. Um, it was always a collaboration between the nurses and the local health department or any other um, um, health, or health organization wherever the, the individual tested. Um, so that was always done in-house so we would do the contact tracing um, regarding any individual that had contact with any positive person within the school building so now over time that's just become more prevalent we have more testing going on as i'm sure you are aware um, and we have very specific protocols that in some way shape or form are leading to more contact tracing having to be done we are, again we're also back in school full-time with all of the students full time, we didn't have that last year. So you put all those factors together, it explains why there's a lot more contact tracing going on um, now. But to speak to your point, yes, the nurses are doing all the contact tracing that occurs within the school building. Would it make sense um, instead of giving them more hours to do it, like to get a third party that they contact tracing more hours? Because that's what makes sense. Well, we have nursing assistants to help. Uh, the problem is we just don't have enough of them. Uh, I did, we have we have some in every building. But. Yes, we have an additional healthcare assistant in every building um, to assist the nurses. It also has been a challenge to also find those people um, and to maintain them on staff. Is that was that a full time position or? Um, yes, yeah, some of them are. Um, they work five hours. It's an it's an hourly five hours per day, and some of them are contracted out through Bayada Consulting or um, Health Services. Okay, before we um, make a motion to for the, the public comment, I just want to let the public know we have two walk-in resolutions tonight. Um, the first resolution is 3B and it reads as follows. Therefore, be it resolved that the Fort Lee Board of Education, upon recommendation of the superintendent, hereby reverses the founded HIV investigation 2246 88-SN1-11112021 and then in parentheses custom ID colon S1-1 and the second walking resolution will be 17P and that reads as follows therefore be it resolved that the Fort Lee Board of Education upon the recommendation of the superintendent approves the appointment of lead replacements during the 2021 to 2022 school year as outlined below and there is one individual named priscilla madeira um, the grade subject involved is teacher of world language spanish at fort lee high school the salary is listed to be sub paid for the first 60 days at 150 dollars per day on day 61 and after at the daily rate equal to a BA step one and the position has no benefits. It will be effective January 24, 2022. 
through June 30th, 2022. And the reason for the opening is a maternity leave um, of one of our staff members. May I have a motion to open the floor to the public? Motion. Sure. Motion, Richter, second, Rabino, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? <clears throat> we will hear first from any members of the public that are physically located here at the cafetorium tonight. And then we'll take questions and comments from those participating remotely. For remote public participants, please select the raised hand button in the upper left corner. Our board secretary, Hakeisha Taylor, will recognize each community member in the order of the raised hands by lowering the hand and unmuting the microphone. All public speakers should state their name and home address for the record and then begin their comments. Please limit your comments to three minutes. We have any members of the public that would like to speak who are physically present here tonight? Um, we don't. And so do we have any raised hands? Uh, I do not see any raised okay. hands, and now I do. So for those out in remote land, Zoom land, please do raise your hand now uh, if you would like to be recognized to speak. Ms. Byers Kang, I am promoting you to panelists. Please feel free to share your video and your comment. State your name and address for the record. You have three minutes. Ms. Kang. I'm trying to figure this out, I'm sorry. Let me see on my computer. Um, hi, this is Tanya Byers Kang from 275 Tom Hunter Road. Thank you all very, very much. That was really wonderful. There's a lot of great ideas. Um, or not ideas, there's a great, a lot of great things going to happen. Um, unfortunately, the only people I could hear were uh, Mr. Kravitz and Paula really clearly, but um, I'm sure more information will come out as to um, how everything will work. This is just like the first preview. So I'm, I'm grateful for that. Um, I have a question when it comes to the um, sixth, seventh and eighth grade math that you had talked about, will that be kind of how like the honors classes go? Like will it only, will it only be by recommendation and like a certain amount of people being able to get into that? I don't, I don't want it to be like a very competitive thing, like, or will it just be like the child is placed where they should be placed? Um, that's kind of the question, sorry. Sure, the answer, thank you, Ms. Byers Bank for calling in. Um, the idea is to have a rubric that would be created so that it would be a, a, a blind rubric where, where do students fit with their grades, teacher recommendation, uh, scores from either a, a start strong or from a NJSLA and a, also a star assessment. Create that um. and look, look at those opportunities and grades. So you're including everything. You'd have about five criteria and then create from there the rubric and a scoring rubric for how, how students would get in. Okay, so it's gonna be based on the testing that people say is not important? No, okay. it's based, there, are, there are multiple criteria that we would use. Uh, we haven't developed it as of yet, but there would be a criteria that would be open to everybody and they would see it. Certain percentages, certain, certain items would have different percentages. And we would look at all of those, those uh, criteria in one rubric and then determine uh, and perhaps even an assessment to see how well their math scores are, and math, math uh, skills are. Okay. Um, is that how it's normal? Is that how it's normally how these things are normally done? That they, they look at the the test scores and they like the test because because we've always been told that the tests don't like the tests don't matter. Like the tests don't make um, make or break a student. Um, with the testing so now so now i feel like if you're going to put the pressure on the students that they are going to have to um perform at a certain level on these tests that they've been told aren't so important and not to get stressed out over them um that that's going to make it even harder for them so there's multiple criteria um and looking at it again from the data 80 percent, 79 percent of the high school students Okay. Okay. And so that's not going to make them. 
And so we're basically changing. So to answer your question specifically, we're not basing it on just one test. If there's a multiple criteria that we wish I could hear, I wish I could hear you. There are multiple criteria that we would use. It's not just one test, grades, recommendation. Um, you know, there, there are multiple criteria that we would use and we would develop. And the administration of the middle school and well as the high school would create that criteria. So, so I can hear. But I appreciate um, I appreciate what I could understand. I can't wait for these everything. I know everyone feels the same way when, when people can be heard because they can't understand with this on their face. But anyway, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you for all your hard work. Thank you. Well, I, just, I, I don't know if it was the same question. Can you have any math? You mean like a STEM program, which is a STEM program, which wouldn't be an admission criteria, is that correct? No, the STEM program is not an admission criteria. What's the 6 and 8 program? No, that's right. That's I think she's program. talking about the change. That's the how they get into program. math. That's how right. they get into the math honors programs. I think that's okay, what she is referring right. to. Okay. Right. There are no other raised hands. May I have a motion to close the floor to the public? Motion. Motion, Robert, uh, second, Rubino, all in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, we'll move on to um, resolution. <coughs> May I have a motion to approve items 1B through 3B? Motion. Second. Motion, Richter, second, Ramba. Roll call, please. Mr. Rubino? Yes. Ms. Morrell? Yes. Ms. Cho? Yes. Ms. Curry? Yes. Ms. Stasu? Yes. Ms. Richter? Yes. Ms. Ramba? Yes. Ms. Kim? Ms. Colbeth. Yes. Motion carries. Uh, may I have a motion to approve items 1 CUR through 3 CUR? Second, Rector. There's a motion on the floor, Ms. Ramba. Was there a second? Yes. Ms. Rector. Roll call, Ms. Stasu. Yeah. Ms. Kim? Yeah. Ms. Ramba? Yeah. Mr. Rubino? Yeah. Ms. Richter? Yes. Ms. Cho? Yeah. Ms. Morrell? Yeah. Ms. Curry? Yes. Ms. Colbath? Yes. Motion carries. We have a motion to approve items 1F and 9F. Motion Ramba. Second, Richter. Motion Ramba, second, Richter. Roll call, please. Ms. Richter? Yes. Ms. Curry? Yes. Mr. Rubino? Yes. Ms. Kim? Yes. Ms. Ramba? Yes. Ms. Stasu? Yes. Ms. Cho? Yes. Ms. Morrell? Yes. Ms. Colbath? Yes. Motion carries. We have a motion to approve items 1P through 17P. Motion Ramba, second. Richter, roll call, please. Ms. Cho? Yes. Ms. Curry? Yes. Ms. Morrell? Yes. Ms. Kim? Yes. Mr. Rubino? Yes. Ms. Richter? Yes. Ms. Dasu? Yes. Ms. Ramba? Yes. Ms. Colbath? Yes. Motion carries. Um, is it Someone on the board, I mean, on the, you said sent out letters to all the liaisons to let them know who the liaisons were. Yes, so there is a letter. Um, I made some changes to, you know, just uh, make it a little bit more robust than what we used last year. Yeah, I will circulate sure everyone's um, selections. Mm -hmm. um, you're right, I, I did send those around last time. I was actually waiting for MJ's and, and then I. No, I don't want to put the blame, but I was, it, I, it was in the back of my mind, but I will absolutely circulate. and. There have been a couple of tweets, a couple of contacted me, preferred not to be on a particular committee. Um, and so the, the, the listing will be changing in just minor ways, um, but I will also tomorrow circulate everyone's yeah, letters. I'm not sure they do one out last year. Like, I'm pretty, they did go out. They, they did go out, and I know uh, Hakeisha's working on the middle school. Thank you. So you don't get it. No, I, didn't. I don't remember getting what everybody signed up. Yeah, I, I, everyone's going to be so much. Um, do we, 
Before I ask for a motion to adjourn, don't we need to go back into private just to finalize the residency issues? I, I think it's only going to be 10 minutes. Yeah. But, okay, so, so the board um, will be um, going back into executive session. I anticipate no more than 10 minutes. And then we will come out and adjourn the public session. Okay. So may I have a motion to go back into executive session? Second. Chow, motion, Chow, second, Ramba. All in favor? Aye. Any abstentions? Any opposition? Okay. We will return to public. Thank you again, ladies. Thank you. We will return to public in approximately 10 minutes. Are you, Paul? Are we back in public? We are. The, the camera is on and we are unmuted. Okay. Um, the board just met in executive session um, to deal with some items that we didn't um, complete earlier this evening relating to residency hearings. Um, the board will be voting on two resolutions. The first is 1B, and the resolution reads, the board having conducted a residency investigation and hearing heard from the parent in executive session this evening hereby moves to remove student 24050167 from the district and resolution 2B reads as follows. Therefore, be it resolved that the Fort Lee Board of Education having heard from the superintendent of schools in executive session, hereby moves to remove students 2305010422050105 and 26100072 from the district. And we will vote on these separately. May I have a motion to approve resolution 1B? Ms. Kovach, yes. I think those are resolutions 4B and 5B. We voted on 1 through 3B tonight already. Okay, so 4B will relate to student 24050167, and resolution 5B will relate to the three students whose numbers I won't reread again. Yes. Um, may I have a motion to approve resolution 4B? Motion, Rama. Second, Richter. Motion, Ramba. Second, Richter. Roll call, please. Ms. Morell? This is a single child. A single child? Yes. Oh. Uh, yeah. Ms. Joe? Yes. Mr. Rubino? Yes. Ms. Dasu? Yes. Ms. Ramba? Yes. Ms. Kim? Yes. Ms. Curry? Yes. Ms. Richter? Yes. Ms. Colbach? Yes. Motion carries. Now I have a motion to approve resolution 5B. Motion Ramba. Second Richter? Motion Ramba. Second Richter. Roll call, please. Ms. Morell? No. Ms. Ramba? No. Ms. Dasu? Ms. Kim? Yes. Mr. Rubino? Yes. He said yes? He said yes. Oh. oh. Ms. Cho? Yes. Ms. Curry? Yes. Ms. Richter? Yes. Ms. Colbat? Yes. Mr. Rubino? Yes. Motion carries. May I have a motion to adjourn? Motion, Cho, second, Rubino, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you all. Thank you.